Hi viewer, I'm Definimo, and I suggest you try this on for size, although it probably won't fit unless you're one of these snakes. So I ask you now, do you know the story of the Pikmin? Because if you don't, then you sure as hell will in a minute. This is Planet Hakatesh, home to Captain Olimar, who is just a straight up piece of eye candy. Born and raised in the candy land of the optic nerve, and everybody knows it, including his boss, who says to him, Go oh, have a vacation, Olimar. And off he goes. He says bye to his family and he say, Have a fun time in space! I hope it's a real treat! Vacation in space has begun. This is where Mr. Olimar will be sat for about a month. No, 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 no! Let's just establish a proper understanding of the situation here. This is the only meteor for millions of miles. And so the ship breaks up into dozens of pieces, falling to the surface of the planet like a meteor shower. There's Sir Olimar right over there. Happy landings, you trooper, you, you fuck up this bed. He lands in a place called the Impact Site. Funny they named it that. It's like they knew. Conspiracy. So right away, lots and lots of information is flung at us. <gasps> Senor Olimar has 30 days until his life support runs out, which is what protects him from the atmosphere's poisonous gases, namely oxygen. So like, it's like they switch things around, it's nice. Very quickly, Lord Olimar stumbles across what he names an onion. Let's see how this encounter goes. Wow, it's a glowing plant. I'm gonna pluck it. Oh, this is our first pigment, or as I like to call it, the thing I sometimes see when I chew on magical mushrooms. Time to use them for labor. With one pigment, we can pick up this object that has a number one in it and make more pigment. When we manage to get five Pikmin, we can pick up this object that has a number five on it. It's like they knew. And with ten Pikmin, we can move this barrier, bringing an end to years of segregation. And we have to watch them slowly shift it until it is perfectly in line with this sloped rock position over here. I could use this time. Alright, I've not eaten in like 20 minutes, so uh, let's just uh, see what's in here. What, what the fuck are these? Lime flavored Doritos? Ew. My god, there it is. The artifact that we have been looking for. Okay, now it's time to carry this to the ship. I could use this time. Okay, I've decided to uh, give these a try. Okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, I mean, they're not bad, but I'm not, I'm not really a fan. Now the next problem is how do we connect? Oh right. And when the sun sets, we must fly into orbit to avoid the creases of the night. If we have a look down there, you'll see what I'm talking about. With an engine, we can enter the Forest of Hope. We're trapped between two large barriers. Great landing spot. Bitch. And down it goes. Now we must wage war. Why, it's the Eternal Fuel Dynamo, with its unlimited energy source. Well, that will solve the world's problems. But first we need to murder this fringy majiggy. He's asleep so we can undergo a surprise attack. So many resources, enough to build an army to launch a full-scale assault in the void- Alright, this needs to be done delicately, so I'll handle this. Don't wake up, you fucking- OH NO! Ah! Look, it's another onion! This motherfucker's yellow! Look at his fucking ears! All the better to hear you with, you little red fuck. And on the third day, they landed again. Yellow Pikmin have the special ability to carry rocks. Incredible. But these rocks are not just any old rocks. They explode. Explode. EXPLODE! These are required for knocking down certain barriers along with rapidly annihilating powerful foes. This area has a couple of important shepherdy boobops. So let's just go get- IT WAS A TRAP! Several Pikmin died that day. But we fought bravely. Now this device is rather high up, but Duke Olimar has been hitting the gym. No wonder he's such a stud muffin. And he's able to throw these guys like their class A drugs that he can't be seen carrying. 
Now that we have the gear, we can travel even further. The forest naval. Yeah, welcome to the cool part. I, I can't, I can't. Now, did you know that red pigment are fireproof? That means that your fire style jutsu won't work on us. My god, it's another onion. <laughs> requests on UFOs than any other subject. So the administrative burden of dealing with that uh, has been so big that the uh, gal- Oh, this guy's blue. Look at him, he's like, uh. Just hold up a minute. Who the fuck is this motherfucker over here? What are you doing? Look at him, nearly dead and he's still trying to steal our shit. But we're on it. Oh god, I wouldn't want these guys to get involved. Yeah, that's right, go back to bed, you green fucking... Meanwhile... What the fuck?! Oh, that's mine. It's my space float. Now I can float. In space. Also, there's this thing, so, um... Oh, oh, okay. Now on this day, things get a little more serious. I have come for you, Mushroom Man! <laughs> oh, so it seems that he possessed the Omega Stabilizer. However, he was not the main enemy of this story, no. Although it was enough to give my ship this spinning thingy. But now I must launch an attack with my army of yellow Pikmin. We proceed through this barrier that was taken down by an earlier bomb squad. Hmm, the, uh, the area looks clear. Let's just make sure it's not a trap of any kind. Ah! Uh, uh, oh no! Oh no, turn down! But bless their souls. Ah, the horror! We must fight through this and stand strong! Hooray, we won! Guard satellite, woo! But we need the red pigment to carry this because of the fire traps outside. Okay, let's just be careful. <gasps> no! Katsum's lock. The thing that reminds me of the mist wiped out a third of our 12th yellow pigmen regiment. But do you think that's it for the drama? No. I promise you that we're just getting started. Yellow pigmen drown him. Blue pigmen save him. Get our shit together. Get you among us, your rappers. Each thing he acquired. Just don't wake up the thing you met, you day. Phew. Now it's time. Time for what, you ask? To step foot into the most hellish level that the game has to offer. I'm talking about none over venom. The terrain in this level is predominantly water, so blue pigment have quite a significant role. First we get a repair type bolt. Everything is going well. All's good in the hood. No danger or doom. Things will get worse by the way, that's sort of what I'm hinting. This beach over here contains the massage machine. Now the blue pigment cannot carry it yet because they first must build the bridge. They cannot carry it through the water. This isn't because objects can't be carried through water, because they clearly can, you see? You see? In the forest naval, there are loads of shortcuts that could be set up through which Pigmen could carry things. Otherwise, they'd just go around. This meant that there were plenty of routes that could be taken. It's a delicious game mechanic. <sighs> However, when water's involved, this game mechanic is sort of thrown away, which is actually fair enough, because otherwise the route that the Pigmen would take would have to depend on whether they're all blue or not. And that sounds like it would be rather complicated programming, and that's why I must accept the need to build this bridge. Or not down this barrier here instead of going around it. <sighs> but that's just an issue of time, and we have enough of that. The real issue is the inhabitants, or as I like to call them, the bitch-ass motherfuckers who violently wreck your shit. One example is this guy. He's pretty similar to these guys, only hunkier and chunkier and more ghetto. Now they're faster and they die slower, which is problematic in itself. But when you kill it, you gotta take it to the onion real fast. Because otherwise, he'll come back to life. Spooky, and there's only spooky, one way to describe spooky. that phenomenon. Oh. And there's these guys. They don't harm you directly, but they really like to blow you into many hazardous things. And there's this mechanical spider thingy. Dude, just be patient. Uh, I'll be there in a minute. This guy fires rocks out of his face. He looks like a spider. Maybe you'd expect web, but nope. Rocks via face. Now his metal exterior makes him impervious to straight up attacks. So let's look at the science. Um, okay, he needs to inhale before firing the rocks. That's kind of like a sneeze. Ah, ah, When you sneeze, you gotta breathe in so there's enough air in the achoo to get rid of whatever the fuck is messing with your nostrils. In this case, the spider needs enough air to launch the rock. However, if he gets the rock ready but doesn't manage to breathe in enough, then either the energy converted to produce the rock will destroy his innards, 
or he'll release the energy as heat via convection, which will require him to expose a part of his innards. So let's block the inhalation process! Well, what do you know? It was the ladder. So now we just need to attack the orange bit. And he's dead. Ross! What's this giant egg? No. No, no, it can't be. We cannot let this egg hatch. I'm gonna grab my- I'm gonna grab my pigment and destroy this fucking- Oh. Holy Virgin Mother of God. He's going after the- No. No. I, I can't do it. Game over, man. No. I did not come this far to get beaten by some big green, angin, glowy, slimy, floppy, sloppy, satanic, transdimensional scruff. Die, you dumb bitch. So we left behind this thing, which gives us 100 Pikmin. Which more or less makes up for the death. Eventually we amassed 28 of the ship's 30 parts. And now it was time to return to the impact site. Now there are three clams. One possesses the part we need, and the other two possess a pearl. Each of which gives us 50 Pikmin. Hashtag bling ting. Okay, so here we go. No. So now we have 29 parts. Which means that if we want it, we could go home. Because the final part doesn't actually matter that much. It's, it's not important in terms of flying the ship. However... YOLO. The final trial. Now as you would guess, this is where the final boss is. But to get to him, we first need to do stuff. Make a bridge, get some bombs, destroy a barrier, make another bridge, walk for survive, push a bomb, destroy another barrier. And now the battle begins! Now let me just investigate this. Ah! Captain Slide, the final boss is a dick. Okay, so this guy's main attack is licking. If he gets you with his tongue, you die. Now if the Pikmin attack his feet, then he'll crush them and they'll die. So the fight went pretty smoothly up until this point. You see, at this point, he started leaping really fucking high. This move is actually really hard to dodge, and in the space of about 10 seconds, we were down to two Pikmin. But then it got more. And then pretty soon, he died. And what did we get? A piggy bank. Yeah. 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 And now we must bring an end to... Wow, that's the first shot of the background. Goodbye, my loyal Pikmin. Huh? Masturbation. Oh! Ah, uh, Pikmin can't masturbate. And now we see all these differently colored onions. But nothing like that is ever introduced in future games. But now we can learn the actual names of the creatures that we have faced, along with some Pikmin dubstep. The end. Oh, it's the happy end. I'll be seeing you later.